Hi, I am Chanshekar Gupta and we are discussing programming concepts. Till now, we have seen procedure oriented programming. Now, let's try to talk about object oriented programming language. We have seen a lot of applications in procedure oriented programming language and what's the real benefit of having these soups? How does it actually helps in building things and making applications easier? Suppose, if you take a real world scenario, you want to develop a game. Let's be different like, unlike others where they will be having a car race and bike race separately. You are trying to develop a race game where you will be having a car and bike, maybe truck, all of these things has to participate in the same game simultaneously. Your friends can connect using hotspot to this game and they will be participating and they will be playing this game. For developing this, if you take a particular vehicle, suppose for example if you have taken car, it will be having methods such as acceleration, deceleration, applying brake, moving forward and everything. You just need to write a function such that whenever I press the up arrow in the acceleration, the car has to accelerate and move forward. Whenever I press the back arrow or down arrow, the game, ha the car has to slow down. Similarly, the same methods will be applicable for bike as well and truck as well. They will be having most of the similarities and they will also be having differences as well. The differences can come in terms of its design. It will be having this much capacity or this much mileage. For example, if you take a car, whereas it comes different when it comes to bike or truck. If you take this scenario, you want to write the program, it will be better or beneficial if you try to group all the required information for a particular vehicle. Whenever I talk about grouping, you might have recollected a specific term called as structures. We have already discussed about structures where we try to group all the required details about a particular entity. Similarly, we will be using classes in object oriented programming language. The difference between structures and classes is in structures, we will be having only the variables, but we will not be having any methods or functions. But in the case of classes, you will be having all these variables. In addition to this, you will also be having the methods like acceleration, deceleration, everything can be a specific method. All of this can be associated with a particular entity. If you take a car, it will be having all of these methods. That is a class. How structure groups all the relevant variables, class groups all the relevant variables which are called attributes and all the functions for that specific entity which are called as methods. Now we have grouped everything and we have defined a class for a car, a bike respectively. As we have discussed, there are certain repetitions in this code. We have repeated the same functions for car and bike as well. But if you are a good computer programmer, it's not good to repeat things because if you make a mistake in car while accelerating instead of connecting to the up arrow, you are connected to the left arrow. Then if you copy paste the code, the same mistake will happen for bike and everything as well. If you want to correct it, you need to correct it all the places. This is not a good approach. In these cases, we will try to make use of a parent class where we will be having all the common methods and all the common attributes. Let's call this vehicle. This vehicle will be having base class such as car, bike and truck and so on. The common aspects of all of these will be covered in this class which is called vehicle. This vehicle is called base class. All of these classes are called derived class. This concept of using the methods from the base class to the derived class is called inheritance. It is similar how we inherit our properties from our parents. In the similar way, we will try to inherit our properties from the parent classes or the base class. They are also called as parent class sometimes. Now, you are, after understanding inheritance, it is time to talk about encapsulation. Have you ever remembered a capsule? The capsule will try to pack or group all the chemicals or all the required uh, drug into a particular thing and it will be formed inside like capsule. Similarly, we have grouped all the relevant information for a particular entity and we have packed it similar to a capsule. The concept of packing or grouping all the relevant information, packaging related things together is called encapsulation. We have to talk about one more term which is abstraction. That is suppose if you are running a hospital. In the case of a hospital, uh, you are maintaining an entity for patient and if you are ma maintaining another entity for doctor. 
it will not be advisable to show the patient personal details such as phone number to the doctor but as you are running the hospital you may need to call the patient later on and it is advisable for you to keep it it will not be beneficial if the doctor sees them similarly it will not be good if the doctor salary is shown to the patient there are some of the aspects which has to be shown which has to be made public and also some aspects which has to be kept private we can bring this feature into our programming language in object oriented programming with the help of access modifiers they are public private and protected if it is public it will be visible to everyone if it is private it will be visible only inside that entity if doctor is a specific entity his salary and his personal details will be visible only to the doctor that is private if it is protected we have seen a base class which is vehicle and we have seen derived classes such as car and all of this so the car and bike can actually use the variables which are declared in the base class vehicle in that case we will be using protected in the case of private even the derived class cannot use that that is the difference between all the three access specifiers or modifiers one more term is remaining that is polymorphism in the case of polymorphism we are having two things in specific it is function overloading and function overriding in the case of function overloading we are which will be achieved at compile time we'll be having a function and we'll be having one more function with the same name but with different number of arguments in the case of first function we'll be having two arguments in the case of second function we'll be having three or four arguments or in some cases the order of arguments can also change for function overloading but in the case of function overriding which is achieved at run time you will be having a base class you will be having a derived class as well and if you want to implement some different functionality for this derived class you will try to override or you will try to give another definition to the function which you have already defined in base class this concept is called function overriding we have talked about lot of terms and the entire concept of this object oriented programming language falls under the category of all these terms i hope i gave a brief overview of all the required terms which will be sufficient for you to move further goodbye